When Elena Kagan appears before the Senate Judiciary Committee for her confirmation hearing, you can bet she's going to get some tough questions from our next guest. Senator Jeff Sessions is the ranking Republican on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, in the midst of a very busy schedule, he's been kind enough to join us today. Senator, great to see you. Hey, thank you. Good to be with you. Now, you had a meeting with Elena Kagan this week. You're one of the first folks she stopped in to see. You described her as delightful. What can you tell us about the meeting? It was a lot of fun. and We had a long discussion, just the two of us. I didn't press her to make commitments on any issues, but talked about her history and her approach to things, and uh, um, I thought it was a good, good, uh, good discussion. Well, uh, let me ask you, uh, there's been some criticism of her that uh, she doesn't have enough experience. She hasn't been a judge, and, and some folks are turning that around and saying, well, Republicans didn't have a problem when Harriet Myers was nominated, and they're comparing their experience level. How do you respond? Well, you know, compared to Sotomayor, for example, her experience level is exceedingly thin. Ju uh, and I said at the very beginning, Sotomayor had an excellent background, private practice, a prosecutor, a trial judge, and an appellate judge. And that was President Obama's first nomination. But Harriet Myers had 25 years of law practice in a big firm, full-time practice, a leader in the Texas bar, and then experience in the White House. So it was thin, and I made that point at the time. But I've never said and do not believe you have to be a judge, but I am disturbed, frankly, that she has almost no legal experience. She's never tried a case. She's never stood before a jury, examined uh, a witness in a courtroom. And that's a lack, I think, that uh, is significant, uh, but not disqualifying, but it's a, a serious lack. And we know that we've, we've had some excellent jurists on the bench at the Supreme Court who haven't been judges prior to that. Um, but I'm guessing your bigger concerns with her have to do with judicial philosophy. That's, I think, the key thing. I think the American people are upset. They believe that we are ignoring our constitutional order. I hear it all the time. A lot of Tea Party people pull out their constitution when they talk to you. And they're concerned about it. And so we have within the law schools uh, some activist philosophies that are out there that suggest judges can allow their empathy, as President Obama said, uh, their feelings, their uh, ideology to influence how they interpret plain words in our laws. I think that's a danger. I think all our liberties are weakened if a judge uh, is not faithful to the law. If they can change the law, the next judge can change the law, and the next judge can the, change the law. And it, it just weakens the protections that our Constitution gives every single American. One of the issues you've clearly um, broken with Elena Kagan on is the issue of military recruiters on campus at Harvard Law when she was the dean there. Uh, they were banned from using the Office of Career Services there at Harvard because of her opposition to Don't Ask, Don't Tell, feeling that uh, the military is discriminatory because it wouldn't be recruiting gay students. Did you all have a chance to talk about that? A little bit. Um, I do care about that. I was involved in the legislation, the Solomon Amendment, and, it, and, uh, and its uh, secondary laws that were passed about that to try to deal with this un unbelievable problem that our great universities were denying the military the right to come on campus. It was a long battle. It was controversial even at Harvard. Uh, when she became dean, uh, they were allowed to come on campus. The law had, was being enforced. Later it was challenged, and she, at various points, unlawfully uh, stopped the military from coming on campus, even though the law was still in force. Uh, and eventually she filed two briefs attacking the law, one in the Supreme Court that was rejected 8 to 0 by the Supreme Court. Uh, and eventually the Solomon Amendment was upheld and the military could go on campus. But she was an advocate. She was a leader. Uh, she looked for the opportunity uh, to uh, pressure the military. But let me, a thing that's really worrisome, Congress and President Clinton uh, established this policy. It wasn't the military. And yet they were punishing our military men and women for something the political branches did. If she wanted to complain, let them complain to us. Are you surprised that she's gotten pushback and criticism from both the left and the right? So many of them say she has a, an unknown record in many respects. And so we have some folks on the left saying, we don't think she's going to be a great advocate for us either. We're also concerned. I think uh, she does lack a record, and I suppose the left could be worried about this nomination. And one thing we should give her a full opportunity to do is to explain uh, these issues. And uh, I think this hearing, Shannon, is pretty significant. She has such a small legal record, 
on, on, that it can be examined. I think how she testifies is going to be important. The, the hearing will set a high bar, I think, and she'll have to meet it. Any hints on a timeline for the hearings? Well, I told the president and, and I told her that I thought we could meet his goal, President Obama's goal of completing this before August. Unless something unusual occurs, I believe that uh, the hearings can be completed prior to the August recess uh, and there will be a full vote in the Senate. All right, it'll be another busy summer. Senator, anyway, always great to have you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Nice to be with you.